This is Beth with The Other Side of Darkness. Check out my blog, theothersideofdarkness.com, where I give my testimony on how I came out of witchcraft, the occult, and abuse in the Mormon Church into a relationship with Jesus Christ, who has been healing me and restoring me day by day. So today I want to talk about um, astral travel and human spirits. So human spirits and astral travel is not a subject that very many people know much about. And I wrote um, about it on my blog on October 31st, 2015, because I was seriously attacked um, that night, which is Halloween night, and that is a a big, holy um, celebration for witches and Satanists. Um, And the reason that I was attacked is because of my testimony, because I'm separating myself from the occult and Satan himself, and because I'm sharing and teaching all about it. And what happens on these um, holy and special days for witches and Satanists is when they get together and they are doing witchcraft in large groups and on these days it's happening in numerous places all over the world so all these groups are getting together and doing witchcraft and the witchcraft is going out and it's being directed towards people or groups of people Um, Witchcraft always has a specific purpose and intent. It is never random. And so when these witches and Satanists are getting together in these rituals, oftentimes some of them will be um, traveling astrally out of their body. So when I say human spirits, I don't mean the actual spirit of a human, but rather their soul. And I'm not sure where the term human spirit came from, but that is a term that I have heard and has been used. So our souls are attached to our physical being with a silver cord. And so because of the silver cord, we're able, our soul is able to leave our body and travel around and still be connected so we wouldn't die. Because if that silver cord was cut, then we would actually die. Um, Because our soul would have no connection to our body anymore. And so astral travel is basically Satan's counterfeit of spirit travel, which has been talked about in the Bible. When in Revelation, John... um, was able to go up into the throne room of heaven and be with God and see, you know, the Lamb, Jesus, and the angels worshiping and the elders on the thrones and all of that. His actual spirit was able to leave his body safely and be with God. And also Paul the Apostle talks about that in the New Testament when he tells a story of how he also went up to the throne room of God, or the third heaven, I believe, as he calls it. And um, that is totally of God. That is a good thing. And people can actually do that. That is not something that's special just for these incidents in the Bible. These are examples of what has happened to other people and can happen to us when our spirit can go into the throne room of God while we are alive and here on earth. It's absolutely an amazing thing. And so Satan's counterfeit is astral travel when our soul leaves because our souls leave our body also for purpose um, and usually with an intention. And so a lot of times um, people actually do astrally travel and don't even know it. So there's two kinds of astral travel. There's astral travel where people are doing it and they don't know it. And then there's intentional astral travel to, um, with an intent. Okay. Well, some people actually do astral travel to have astral sex. And then there's witches and Satanists and new agers who are 
doing astral travel usually in order to harass people or attack people or some people actually do it just they think it's fun um, they're doing it very naively like I said people think they're going to go have astral sex or see what's out there um, there's even people who write books and try to guide people on how to do this um, it's actually extremely dangerous because once your soul leaves your body your body is actually open to allow other things to come in such as demons and so it's very dangerous I, I do not recommend it and I also don't recommend trying to do a lot of research on the internet about it um, because um, there's definitely misinformation when you do find information, but also most of the websites that talk about it are pretty much laced with witchcraft. So I would say if you do research it, do it at your, uh, just do it, know that I, I am warning you that it, it is dangerous even to research it. Um, and everything I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own experience, basically. Um, anyway, so... On Halloween night, um, me and my family were attacked by astral projected spirits. Um, and so what happened was as soon as sunset came, I could feel the witchcraft coming at me. I felt um, sad. I felt chaotic. I felt despair. I felt shaky. My children, my youngest sons, who were six and eight, went out of control. They were running around. They were screaming. They were hurting each other. They were acting like animals. And I was asking for a prayer, and I was praying in the spirit. And in the spirit, I could see all these just white strings coming down just by hundreds at my house. But I saw just a bubble of protection over my house where God was protecting us. But in these rituals, you know, which these witches were just throwing their attacks purposely and intentionally at me because of my testimony and because they were gathered together in such large groups numerously on such a powerful night, then absolutely they were going to attack me and not just me. You know, they're definitely going to attack a lot of other people. And at the same time, that night I was praying for someone who was also under attack. So then I got, you know, doubly attacked for trying to help someone. But anyway, that's just my life. <laughs> and, um, and so that was one of my first experiences really understanding more about astral travel and human spirits. And so um, that is one of the effects of um, human spirits and witchcraft is having these feelings of suddenly coming on, of feeling um, undone, feeling chaos, feeling um, super anxious or scared or in, even angry or violent, just feeling crazy, you know, like my kids. And a lot of times people are coming under attack, witchcraft, or human spirits, and they have no idea. You know, we tend to live in this world and take everything at face value, basically. If whatever we can see is what's real. And so when we don't see the spirit realm, we can't see witchcraft, we can't see um, astral projected spirits, we can't see demons and whatnot, then we tend to not believe in it or ignore it or not even think about it. I mean, even for myself, I know about this stuff, but as you know, I continue to move forward and learn and grow. Even I have struggled, you know, there have been times when I have not realized I was under attack and I thought, Oh, maybe it's just this or that or whatever, you know, something just physical something that I could see, something tangible. And then it took me time to realize, oh, you know, hello, I'm under attack, witchcraft. And then I would pray, you know, I'm against witchcraft, and my symptoms would ease up, or whatever was going on would basically stop. So for instance, um, there was one night last month where my husband and I wanted to go out to dinner, and we were having one of my teen sons watch the younger kids, and they started kind of acting out of control, and we thought we had calmed them down, and so we left. And then my teen son calls me and says, they're completely out of control, you need to come home right now. So we come home, and as we pull into the driveway, we look up and we realize it's a full moon. Well, a full moon, every full moon is always a night 
of high witchcraft activity. It is always a night of rituals. And so we realized, okay, well, no wonder my kids seem like we're going out of con- they're going out of control. We went in the house, and they were running around and throwing garbage and jumping on the table. I mean, they were acting like animals. And that is how my children are affected by witchcraft. And it might have been just that, you know, we are all sensitive to um, supernatural activity, but most likely it was because we are, were under uh, attack, witchcraft attack, because because of my past and the involvement I've had in witchcraft and, and being a victim of satanic ritual abuse, and just because of my testimony, because I am separating myself and moving forward to Jesus, I'm probably going to be, you know, uh, a victim, so to speak, of witchcraft for the rest of my life, and possibly my children too. And that's something that I accept, you know. And some days it's hard to deal with, and some days it's not, you know. But like I said, it's recognizing and understanding and seeing um, what the effects are on you, on your environment. It can affect your animals. Um, Sometimes I'll be making a video, and my animals will start to go crazy, and they'll all just be barking. I have dogs is what I should say. And they'll just be barking and barking and barking like crazy. And they have previously just been perfectly quiet and calm. And then it just seems random. And I'll stop and I'll go and I'll check on them and find out what they're barking at. They're not even barking at anything. Well, I believe that animals definitely sense supernatural activity. And very possible that they were being harassed by human spirits who were trying to distract me or throw me off or stop me from what I was doing. And that is a pretty common thing. So human spirits, spirits, and when I talk about the human spirits, I'm going to just leave this to witches and Satanists who purposely travel to attack people. So what they do in their harassment is, and sometimes they don't even harass, sometimes they just come to spy. Um, There's always spies in the spiritual realm on the enemy side because he wants to know what's going on in, you know, God's kingdom so that he can use it against us, he can stop us or harass us or whatever he would like to do. So sometimes you have human spirits who will be spying on you just to collect information and sometimes you have human spirits that will actually be there to harass you. And so you might feel, like I said, chaotic, um, anxious, um, paranoid, you might feel like someone's watching you, your animals might start acting crazy. As a matter of fact, one time, I, we also have a cat, she all of a sudden ran and attacked my husband out of nowhere. This cat is a, afraid of everything, and she has never attacked anyone in this house. And it was so, so out of sorts for her, and she scratched him really badly. And I knew, absolutely knew, it was witchcraft attack on my husband. Um... And he didn't. He thought, what's wrong with this cat? We need to get rid of this cat. I mean, we've had the cat for a few years, but the cat's never done this. You know? And so it's such a learning process and a learning curve to understand. But witchcraft is so prevalent in our world right now. And in ancient times, witchcraft was actually perfectly normal and I dare say acceptable. Now, to God and to his people in ancient times, let's say Old Testament times, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Joseph, Moses times, it wasn't acceptable to those people. Well, obviously it was to some some of them, but that's what God was talking about. He warned against, um, you know, channeling spirits and, and talking to the dead and, you know, fortune telling and things of that nature because that's witchcraft and, and sacrificing your babies and, and other people because that was what the, they were doing at that time. But it was a cultural thing. It was a religious thing. You know, people of that time, they had, you know, what in the Bible is called false idols, but they were gods, gods and goddesses. And so the people in that culture, and in all cultures of the world at that time, they all worshipped these gods and goddesses. And, you know, they did human sacrifices and they did witchcraft. But I don't think that they called it witchcraft. You know, it was just it was just what they, they did. It was normal. Well, now it's actually a whole separate thing that's not, you know, a normal and acceptable part of society. 
in some circles it is, you know. But, um, I mean, on TV it certainly is cool. But, um, like Harry Potter, come on. And, um, but now it's like normal people, we don't do, you know, witchcraft. That's just for witches and Satanists. But reality is that a lot of people do witchcraft and a lot of people don't even know they're doing it. Witchcraft is just absolutely seductive, but it's also absolutely deceptive to the point where people have done it and don't even know. So people who dabble even in just Ouija boards or tarot cards or psychics or channeling energy and moving it or chakras or crystals or Reiki healing or things along that nature or strain, that is all witchcraft. And so you may have done a Ouija board one time when you were a teenager or a kid and never before or never after, but you have done witchcraft. And when you do witchcraft, you are actually opening up doors inside of you and allowing the devil access to you. And it's not access that just automatically gets closed because you got saved or because you said, oh, I renounce all affiliation. It doesn't even work like that. The way it works is that, and most likely most people that get involved in witchcraft are, don't ever do it just once. Um, there's just something about um, the power and the energy that comes with witchcraft that seduces people into continuing to do it. And they're so deceived that they don't even know they're doing witchcraft. I mean, witchcraft almost always disguises itself as light and good and positive. Unless, you know, you get into the darker, the darker part, <laughs> which is, you know, Satanism, where they have no problem admitting, you know, I worship Satan. I have, I sacrifice babies and, and humans. Um, and so the way that um, witchcraft works is once the door has been opened, basically Satan has free reign to use you. And oftentimes he can just use your intent because the way witchcraft works is it's always about your intention and you putting your intent out and focusing it towards your object or goal. And so when I was a white witch, you know, I would always be focusing it on something that was for the good of all, not to hurt, but it was going to, let's be real, it was going to be good for me. And so these attacks are coming from witches who, I mean, and it can be one witch by themselves or whatever. It, it comes from them um, focusing intent into um, harming someone in some way, but it's you always... Um, it, and it definitely is attached to a strong emotion. It can be anger or hatred or jealousy. Um, it can be love, but love can be misconstrued because you can think that someone should do something or shouldn't do something, and you can focus intent on trying to stop them or coerce them into doing something, and before you know it, you know, witchcraft is happening. And um, it's really unfortunate that so many people are getting involved in witchcraft and are just, they're very naive. They do not even realize they're doing it. But a lot of times, um, people actually end up um, being attracted to witchcraft because it's already in their heritage. It's in their bloodline. Their ancestors have done it, or possibly even their parents or grandparents have done it. And because um, in the past it was very, like I said, normal and acceptable, it's had to go into a more secret place. So cults like Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Masons, a Moose Lodge, Elk Lodge, and, all, and things like that. But it's even in Catholic Church and Christian churches too. Do not be fooled into thinking that it's just these sex that are not a part of what you're doing. It is everywhere. It has absolutely infiltrated the churches. And um, and so these ancestors of ours have been involved in it, and it comes right down into our bloodline. And sometimes we have been directly involved in the witchcraft and don't even know because um, our ancestors, our generations before us, our parents and grandparents even, have done witchcraft to us we don't know or have involved us in it and we don't even know because uh, oftentimes it'll happen when we're young and we don't really understand what's going on and so um, for instance my grandmother when I was a baby I had a memory and this is completely whole, holy spirit revolution or 
revelation, sorry, um, that she was working witchcraft on me. And, you know, it wasn't even in a special ceremony or anything. You know, it was just holding me, and I was a baby. And, you know, her intent was to, you know, put certain things into me. And I won't go into what that was because um, that's personal. But um, that's what witchcraft is. You know, it can be in a ritual, it can be in a ceremony, or it can just be one person focusing that intent, you know? So if you've already opened up the gateways to witchcraft inside of you, and then you get really angry at someone, and you think thoughts and focus that on them, you can really be cursing them, and you are really putting witchcraft on them. And it's very dangerous, but that's exactly Satan's intention, because over time, in, in our history, as it's become less acceptable and normal, you know, to openly do witchcraft, and it's come into these buildings and these groups, and they are basically indoctrinating their children and their children's children and so on and so forth into witchcraft, into the occult, and then sending them off into the world, and they don't know that they are into witchcraft or a part of the occult, and they're going off and they're living their lives, you know, and... And they're doing witchcraft, you know? And so when I stopped, you know, actively participating in witchcraft and I thought, I, I don't do that anymore. I believe it. And, you know, before I even accepted Jesus, I thought I had no part of it. But what I was doing was, you know, my emotions and my intent were being used by demons that had been put inside me that I accepted without even, you know, realizing that um, through witchcraft that I was doing witch witchcraft on people. And so when I got saved and I accepted Jesus and I, I renounced all of this, and I renounced it many times, but I had not gotten the demons out. I had not closed the doors. It doesn't work that way. It is not that simple. It really, it takes the work of the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you to rid yourself of this and close the doors. And it can be a long process for some people, you know, for me. I'm into it only six months, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a while longer. It could even be a year or two. I'd have no idea because, the, for me, so much was opened. I mean, I'm talking about years and numerous, numerous rituals, and not even by my choice. But, um, and so, you know, and, and many people, they think that, you know, they're not participating in it by watching movies such as Harry Potter or Frozen or, you know, Vampire Diaries or Walking Dead, but those all have witchcraft and actually are doing witchcraft. And you're watching it, you're participating in it, you're opening yourself up to it. It is becoming a part of you. And not only that, but it's also shaping your thoughts and beliefs, you know, because you're subjecting yourself to it over and over again willingly and naively and and you know, God understands that you don't know what you're doing, but I'm trying to, to help you and to educate you. And once you hear these words, you know, and you begin to ha have understanding, you are responsible for the choices you make. And, and so I just want you to understand that God is not angry at you if you've done witchcraft, knowingly or unknowingly. But the sins of the fathers come down into the third and fourth generation. And so whatever has happened in in your generations, it is in you, and it's going to keep going into your children unless you do something to stop it, and it's going to affect you, and there's many ways that um, witchcraft and generational witchcraft can affect you, and some are obvious and some are not obvious. Some are as obvious or maybe not obvious, but something that you can see, such as physical problems, such as um, pain. Um, like back pain and headaches that are constant that you cannot get rid of, or diseases such as fibromyal fibromyalgia or autism that are just, they're a constant part of your life. They're not going to go away. You can't get rid of them. Um, and they can also be such things as mental and emotional problems like um, depression, anxiety, um, rage, anger. And then they can also be such things as addiction to drugs and alcohol or sex or pornography. Those are all things that are almost always attributed to generational and ancestral um, witchcraft and occult, occult involvement. And then there's other things just such as um, having problems with your emotions like 
um, anxiety, rage, and stress, um, and things like that. Um, or sleeping, you have problems sleeping, um, being tired all the time, brain fog. Those are things um, that are more symptoms of you being involved in witchcraft or past involvement in witchcraft. And um, witchcraft is just, it's not something that just pops up out of nowhere. It's not like uh, you're going to be attacked by witchcraft or have astral projected spirits coming at you because you work with a witch or you live um, and you have a neighbor that's, uh, you know, into Satanism or whatever. Not to say that those kind of people would never attack, but the attacks are always very specific intention and reason. There's always a purpose behind it. And witchcraft attack attracts witchcraft. And so if you're being attacked by witchcraft, then the chances are somewhere in your life you already have witchcraft, whether it was you or whether it was involvement from your family, you know. And it's just something people just don't think about. And it's really, really unfortunate. So we need to become aware. We need to grow our discernment. We need to ask God to begin to teach us. We need to understand the spiritual realm. We need to understand spiritual warfare. You know, the whole passage with Ephesians 6, when it talks about spiritual warfare, and it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against the powers and authorities and principalities of the unseen realms and rulers of darkness. I mean, that is real. And, you know, we can blame Satanists and witchcraft and witches and, and other people that are doing these things, but the reality is it comes from Satan. It's all from Satan, you know. And so I know this is a lot of information, and I hope that um, you've been able to take what you need from it and to gain more understanding and more knowledge about witchcraft in the spiritual realm and how it affects you and, and what it can do because it is a big deal. And, and I want people to um, begin to start to understand because once you understand um, more about the spiritual realm and, and witchcraft, you can start to know the attacks and you can start to know your enemy. And not that I think in any way you should focus on witchcraft or attack or the devil because that is not um, my intention with educating you because always, always it goes back to the Father. It goes back to your relationship with Jesus. You know what? It is my relationship with Jesus. It is my desperation and my pursuit of knowing him and wanting more of him that has led me into this knowledge and information. You know, I could have remained ignorant. I could have became a Christian and just walked, you know, into this walk and and just continued to live my life kind of the way I had or, or made some changes, you know, but remain ignorant. But it's because of my desperation, you know, and also knowing that there was clearly something going wrong in my life and wanting to know where did that come from and why? But always going back to just a pure desperation for Jesus Christ to be with him and to know him and to have him in my life. And to not just have him in my life, but to have him a part of every every facet of my entire being, you know. And that's what it comes down to because I can tell you all this stuff, but if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you're not going to grow and learn and understand and then um, be able to learn about protecting yourself, about the power you have because of Jesus Christ, about um, discernment and, and letting the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. I mean, because that is ultimately your goal in this life is that relationship because he will then lead you into all knowing and all truth about things. But you know, if you are seriously oppressed in this life, then it is for a reason. It's because the devil knows that um, you have a strong calling on your life, and he wants to stop it. And so you have a choice to make. You can continue to live your life the way you've lived it, in ignorance or, or being naive, or you can say, you know, I see that there's something wrong and going on, and I know that it's probably... Um, something that I really don't want to know about or I don't want to hear or maybe I don't understand. Um, but if I if I look further into it and I seek the Father and I seek His truth and His knowledge um, and His heart for, for me and my life, then I will um, begin to achieve freedom. 
and, and glorify him in this life, which is what you were born to do. You were born to glorify God. Whether you've ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior or not, you were born to glorify him. You do have a purpose, a very specific and special purpose. And that's exactly what witchcraft is about. Witchcraft is about stealing you away from that purpose that God has given you. It's about stealing you away from that relationship with God. Because opening these portals, you know, purposely or inadvertently, it does. It hampers your relationship with God. It causes you to lose discernment about the evil in this world. It causes you to fall prey and to sin. And sin comes from evil and pain. And it also causes you to not be able to hear him and feel him and even believe in him. Because witchcraft just builds this maze of walls and doors and gateways into your soul and into your mind. And before you know it, you've lost touch with what you believed or with God. Or maybe, you know, you never felt that relationship or felt that connection. And you, you never can. But you've got to work on... Um, be willing to even be open to believing this stuff and knowing that it's true and it's real and it's affecting you. You know, and it's not just affecting you, it's affecting your children, your spouse, your friends, your family, and all the people you care about. And I guarantee you right now, somewhere in the city you live in, there's at least one building where it looks like a good place to go, where everyone that goes there looks nice and dresses well and looks like they have a normal life and they go into that building and meet and they have a secret room where they do satanic rituals and they're indoctrinating more people who are indoctrinating their children i mean it's real and it's not going to stop and i'm not telling you this because i want you to be afraid i want you to have knowledge and i want you to know because we're here to fight the good fight we're here to run the race and we can't do it if we don't know what what we're up against or what's even inside of us We've got to know what's going on inside of us. And first and foremost, you've got to go to the Father, and you've got to seek His face. You've got to fall into His love and His grace and His mercy. And you've got to forgive yourself for anything you might have done, because He's already been forgiven. He's not mad at you. He doesn't hate you, and He doesn't look down on you. That is lies from the devil. God just wants you. You're His. Whether you want to give yourself to Him or not, you're still His. He created you. He made you, and he made you for a purpose and a reason. You're special, you're wanted, you're loved, you're beautiful. You're perfect just the way you are, whatever it is you're doing. Stop condemning yourself and stop living in ignorance. You don't have to. You don't have to. There's so much more for you. And I am here for you. I am here for you. God loves you. Let's pray. Father God, we just love you so much. We just thank you so much for wisdom. And I just pray for discernment for everyone watching this video. And I pray for protection for everyone watching this video. I pray that you would just cover everyone and wash them clean with your blood, Lord Jesus. That you would put their armor on right now. And that you would remove any human spirits from their home. Any harassment that's trying to come at them as they watch this video, God, complete protection from the moment they hit play on this video, God, before I even pray this prayer over them, God. I pray that you would help them to disconnect from witchcraft and Satanism and Luciferianism, God. I pray that you would help to cut off all generational ancestral ties and their bloodlines to witchcraft and the occult. I pray that you would help them to understand any witchcraft that has been working in their lives or working even within them, but that they would have no condemnation about this, God, because there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Condemnation, fear, and shame are from the devil, not from God. I pray with your perfect love you would just cover them right now. I pray a hedge of protection around each person's house right now and cleansing even of their home and their animals, their children, their spouses, their family, and all their loved ones, God. That you would just bring them into your throne room, God. That they would feel your perfect love, God, in this very moment, even if it's just for a split second, God. That you would touch that part of their soul that is craving, desiring, and crying out for the love of God. Because that's exactly what we were made for, Lord. And I love you, and I thank you for everything, God. I pray for healing, discernment, freedom from bondage, freedom from captivity, and, and freedom from curses, God. We love you. We love you so much. You're wonderful. 
Help us to forgive ourselves and to accept ourselves for who we are as dearly loved children of the one true King, of the Father God on the throne room, in the throne room of heaven. We just pray that we could go there with you and be there with you right now in this very moment and just relax. I pray peace be still in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for freedom, God. We love you, Lord. We need you, God. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord. I pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen.